Hey guys, Kev here, and I have two things to quickly unbox. This one is from Ferrum Forge. This one is from Skiff. So let me get into that one real quick. Got my little unboxing knife, the Surge Leaf. Absolutely loving this little guy. Just trying to keep my address off of stuff. Yep. And yep. Okay. So basically, I ordered two sets of 316th, 116th bearings, and two sets of 5 millimeter 116th bearings. Just restocking. Whenever I put bearings into knives, like I put some into the Mini Tempest here, um, I tend to always just restock right after, even though I still have some. I know I'm crazy. But anyway. We have that, and then we have this. I'm going to see how we get into this. It has my address on it, so I'm just trying to be careful. Ah, I see. There's a little bit of tape around the cap. That's all. Let's see if I can do it without showing you my address or cutting myself again. Because this knife got me already. There we go. All right, so you guys can probably guess what this is. There's a sticker. I do like these uh, shipping tubes. They're kind of cool. I might keep that and just use it. I don't know. Um, you could probably guess what this is. It is a Fair and Forge Stinger. And I got the Unicopper one. So they're able to keep the price down on their knives because they have terrible packaging. So I'm just kidding. I actually don't mind their packaging. You can see here it says Stinger Tie Nitro V Titanium Unicopper Carbon Fiber. It's actually a new type of carbon fiber for me anyway. Here's another Ferrum Forge sticker. And I, I'm not the biggest fan of their boxes, but you know what? It gets the job done, and then it comes with this pouch, which is fine. Honestly, if it saves them money, good. Because it probably saves me money then too, right? Um, I was hoping that this scale didn't add much weight. I don't think it does if it's carbon fiber. It does have a little bit of copper in it. It does add some weight because there has to be copper in there somewhere. Um, but it's not going to add too much yet. It's still pretty lightweight. I pretty much assumed right off the bat I wasn't going to like this knife because it's a frame lock and it's right-handed. And I'm probably not going to be able to reverse flick it. I don't want to piss myself off yet, so I'm not going to do it yet. Um, these are made by We Knife Co. for Ferrum Ford. You can see the centering is dead on nuts there. Now, that is um, before me checking if there's blade play or anything, so we'll see. Um, the inlay is really nice. Uh, it looks really cool. So it is as cool in real life as it looks in the pictures. I'm glad I went with this one. A lot of people are digging on the plain tie one, which I get for 175 bucks, probably a better value. I think this one was 210 or something. Uh, but I just think it's cool. Now, I'm not usually the guy who has knives with different uh, scales on different sides. Uh, I actually went through my collection. I don't know if I found a single one where one scale was different than the other. Um, so it's not very normal for me, but uh, you know how it goes. It is a two-piece construction, so it's a little bit different than the, uh, I guess we'll call it the budget version now. I have this one, compliments of my good buddy uh, Jake, Bearded Gear, who uh, gave me this. And then I got Cerberus Micarta Scales. Uh, I, I really like this knife because it is usable left-handed i recently tuned it up a little bit i got the detent where i wanted it and the action where i wanted it it's dead centered it's on skiff bearing and it's reverse flickable left-handed i got rid of the flipper tab and uh just you know made that choil a little more comfortable the whole knife just feels a little bit better that way but i did that because the detent on this one sucked when i got it um so we'll see how this one is uh, but I really do like the Stinger as a model. Uh, I don't carry this a lot because it's sort of a budgety type knife. And I don't know, it just doesn't excite me for some reason. But I also never get rid of it because I do really like it. Um, it's it's honestly one of my favorite sort of budgety knives. And I love Nitro V Steel. Now, I have had some issues with rusting on 
um, the Stinger specifically, but that's mainly because of this bead blast finish. So we'll see how they finished the premium one, but it looks to be the same. Uh, bead blasting can, can cause corrosion issues, honestly. Um, so yeah, again, I like the two piece construction, no backspacer. It's much like the arch Bishop 3.0. You have this very minimal clip. It's one of the things I love about Ferrum Forge and specifically the Stinger. You have that awesome fuller right there. Uh, the lock bar insert screw sticks out quite a bit. It's a little odd, but okay. You have the pivot screw here, and then you have the classic Ferrum Forge triangle pivot. Um, again, the inlay transitions feel pretty dang good. Eh, actually, I can feel the edges of the inlay all around. Um, like I can catch it with my finger. So not the best inlay work, honestly. The inlay is really nice, I guess I should say. And uh, I do wish this went around the pivot. I don't know why, but I just feel like that would have looked a little more uniform. Uh, but it looks okay the way it is. It has that classic flipper tab. Ooh, and it looks like it has a solid detent. Yeah, that's a good one. It feels pretty snappy, yet... Feels like it'll be soft enough for righties to get in there. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, that feels good. That feels pretty much the way I have this one tuned, honestly. Uh, this one might even be a little lighter than that. Yeah. Um, the fuller is very well designed to catch your finger. And again, I'm guessing this will not work. Ow. Yep. Damn it. So you're going to have to climb up on the pivot. And then the uh, detent's too strong. And if you climb down here, you probably, yeah. Again, just the only way to do it is to put your finger over here. It's just not happening, guys. So uh, left-handed, you're not going to be able to reverse flick this knife very easily. You can bum flick it, sort of. But that uh, fuller just really catches you, and it's just not the best. So I've always loved this design. And uh, it truly is one of my favorite uh, overall just sort of silhouette and designs and, and in terms of price point and everything. It's just such a good piece, right? But it's just not lefty friendly, especially in the frame lock version. Um, so I'll probably be moving this relatively quickly. You guys know me. Um, but they did sell a bunch and they were at Blade HQ, so I don't know how easy it will be to move it. Um We'll see if it's still available when this video drops. If anybody watching is interested, you can certainly let me know. I'll try to put something down there if I did sell it. Uh, it says Nitro V right there. I do wish for $215 that this had something better than Nitro V. Now, I have nothing against Nitro V. I actually think it's one of the best steels just in overall sort of performance. But uh, I just think... It's definitely regarded as a mid-range steel, uh, even close to the budget range. Um, but it's like 154 CM in the sense that uh, custom makers use it. So it, it, it gets more love and it can it can kind of push itself to a higher price point. But um, I still think that mm, they probably should have went with 20 CV on this guy. Um, and I think 215 for 20 CV with these materials would have been really good, right? But I'm guessing they would have had to have charged closer to 300 to make that work. I don't know. Um, it all depends on how you want to run your business, how much margin you're looking for, all that type of stuff. So, um, you know, it is what it is. And you're getting Nitro V for starting at 175. I know some people are going to balk at that, but honestly, it, it doesn't make a difference to me. The amount I'm going to use the knife and everything, uh, you know, like I barely used this one. Uh, and I've had it for oh, probably a year at this point. So, um, yeah, but I do like this guy. Let's feel for blade play. No play, no rock. Um, I definitely like it without the flipper tab because you can get it to drop better um without getting caught there but that reverse flick right-handed man i totally get it if you're right-handed this is a, a dream guys so there you go that's the uh unboxing first impressions of the ferrum forge 
uh, frame lock stinger. So this is not a full review, and I, we'll see. I may not actually do a full review because it's basically going to be my review of this um, minus being able to lefty reverse flick it, which is a big difference, but uh, I don't need to sit here and hash on that for another 10 or 20 minutes in another video, do I? Um, so we'll see what happens. I really do like this though. It's a very good looking knife. Um, the action is really good. I always love these flipper tabs. Um, it's so thin, you know, that's, what's so great about the stinger. Uh, so I don't know, but at the same time, not being able to flick it easily is just a killer. It really is. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's it, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Am I crazy? Uh, you know, do you love this knife? Are you left-handed? Would you get one, etc.? I love you all. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.